That is it. That is it. I can't do this. I genuinely can't do this. I can't. I can't. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I need an office. I need a garden. I need space. I need consistency in my home. This doesn't work. Fuck knows how I'm going to change it. I don't know. But now this has been damaged and I can't have this. Can't have this, can't have this, can't have this. I got to this point with Aaron and Faith when I was working, and I was in actually in a four bedroomed house at the time, but I didn't have an office space, and obviously I had four kids. Um, and working from home was really difficult, and plans were getting ruined and things were getting done. But this is different. This is my kids' court paperwork. And Aaron, Elijah, and Shiloh really don't know what they're doing. They really don't get it. But I have just literally picked up one of my bundles and found it on my sofa. And it's like, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. I can't, I can't, I can't. It's, it's, it's too important. It's too precious. It's too, it's too, I, 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 I to, to all of you, this is nothing. But this little piece of paper here, this one piece of paper, this now crumpled and torn piece of paper, is the only piece of paper that stands between the fact that my children were taken off of me. It's this little piece of paper that gives police officers the permission to come and treat you like a nasty person and beat the living daylights out of you and get your children out of your arms. And they'll, with, 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 with one of these, with one of these, yeah, they'll they do anything. Look, 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 it, it, this is what it is. So this is the emergency protection order, which by the way, let me just prove something to you, yeah? This was an emergency order protection yeah, which apparently they only actually last for 72 hours, right? Look at the date. It was signed, well, it's not actually even signed. Well, it sort of is. But look, look at the date that it was signed. Friday. Well, that's not actually the date it's signed, sorry. This is when the order ends. So that's Friday, the 21st of December. Now, as far as I'm aware, um, a, a, an order of emergency protection order lasts 72 hours. Aaron and Faith were taken on the 13th of December. And then these pieces of paper get filled out afterwards. But I can't do it. This is not, this is not funny now. People are not getting it. They're not getting my frustration. They're not getting it. They're not understanding. It just looks like lots of paperwork. But this is paperwork that's been dumped on me. This is paperwork that was replaced instead of my children. And now with, with Aaron and Faith, with, with Elijah and Shiloh, I just get dumped with more and more paperwork. And, and it's like, I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't have this paperwork damaged. This, this is my only evidence. Just as I live in a record and I get things off my head, it's all I've got to show that I have two other beautiful children. Because unfortunately, I don't have stretch marks to prove it. Yeah, I don't have stretch marks to prove it. You know, so this is it. Uh, you know, and I'm glad, I'm glad the folder's out, but it means that they've been in my bag and taken it out. And it's like, you know, this was a non molestation order because, listen to this, pursuant of Section of Family Law Act 1996, the mother is prohibited from entering the town of Prestatin from approaching or communicating with the children other than during supervised contact. Yeah, you can't do that like that, darling. Um, from approaching any property in which the children are residing in or known to be residing, instructing, encouraging, or permitting any person to behave in, in this way. And this will remain enforced until the 16th of May, yeah? Don't forget, the 13th of May was the last time I have seen Aaron and Faith. The 13th of May, yeah? You know, so I'm going through a lot at the moment. The 13th, yeah? The 13th of May 2013 was the last time I ever saw Aaron and Faith again. And the last time I saw them, my daughter was begging and screaming and crying, saying, please, mummy, don't take me. And don't worry, the snake doesn't hurt. And you don't touch the man's penis, do you, mummy? Yeah? And then I never seen my kids since. Yeah? Never seen my kids since, crying and screaming at me that they're going to these people are going to do all these horrible things to them. And I haven't seen them since. 
And you wonder why I'm traumatised. You wonder why I'm the way I am. They're lucky I don't find them and kill them. So I can't do this. This paperwork has to be pre protected because this is all what's going in my book. Yeah, this application for placement, Section 22, Adoption and Children's Act, 2012. <laughs> Who the fuck's Ray Dickinson? Who's Ray Dickinson? Who's Paula Dawson? Yeah, these are just people that write paperwork. They just sign paperwork. They just... This, this, just this it, this it. This it. This it. That's it. That, 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 that's, 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 that's. Mr. Thompson has not part, played any part in these proceedings and has not sought to put himself forward as a carer of the children and he has not sought any contact. However, he has not consented to the children being placed for adoption. Yeah? Mother didn't. Yeah? It's like, what? What? The recommendation for the local authority that Aaron has indirect contact with his mother one year for North Wales adoption letterbox system. And yes, I get it. And the last letter that I got told me that my daughter had been taken away by herself with someone called Nana, not with her brother, not with the adopted people. And she's come back and she was long, blonde, beautiful, curly hair. Cut it all off, put football trainers on in the top. That's what I did after what happened to me. And I wonder why I flip out. So anyway, I really, really, really need to get all this stuff protected because my boys have just literally pulled all of the things out and and now it's not even in order again. So, you know, my first statement is is, is here and, and then all of this is pulled out now. And, you know, even just to go through this, there was like 32 copies of the psychological report and 32 copies of this and, I mean, look, look, look. Look, she's like, nah, can't do this, can't do this, can't do this. I can't just put my paperwork back away because I, I have to carry on because every day this is not getting done and every day I'm getting pushed and further, further into this life and every day Aaron and Faith are getting older and I don't know what's going on with them because all of this is just the contact recording notes. It's all it's done, it's all it is, it's all it is. That's all it is, yeah? And then this one, yeah, look. Um, the policewoman appeared to hear Kelly frowning at me. Aaron eventually strapped... Listen to this, right? I arrived with Faith and Aaron for contact. Kelly wasn't waiting in a car park where she usually was. She, uh, They appeared to, to get out of the car happy. Uh, Kelly was waiting in the foyer. She had greeted the children with a smile and said she hadn't seen them arriving. The children smiled at their mother. On leaving Aaron, of which they spell A-A-A-N, said he needed to go to the toilet. As we passed the foyer on the way to the toilet, Kelly said to me about, there's that man, I'm gonna rip his head off. There was a police officer, I saw the man who took my kids off me. I didn't know why he was there, we just went to the toilets, and there's a man, and I've just seen this man who's just violated and abused my family, who I haven't seen since that day. I asked Kelly which man she was referring to and she pointed to the man outside standing at the entrance who she said was the policeman who had taken the children off of her. Now, this is dated. Um, it's January of some time, two seconds. This is actually January. The 11th of January, 2013. So Aaron and Faith were taken off of me. You got the WhatsApp on there, darling. Aaron and Faith were taken off of me on the 13th of December 2012 by, the, two, poli by two police officers and two social workers. And then orders were not written until the 27th, 21st. This is why my book's so damn important. We're not written until the 21st of um, thing. And then if I read you this, you'll know. So this is the 11th of January. Yeah, nearly a month after my children have been taken off me. Kelly became quite vo vocal and excited and suggests that we leave via the side door rather than her confronting the policeman. So basically, it was the end of my contact with my children. 
I was feeling agitated because as we were coming out from the road, the policeman was stood at the front and I suggested to the contact person, could we go through the back and take the kids out that way? One, to stop me feeling agitated, and two, because my children are traumatised by this man too. Because this man has basically kidnapped my children and kept it going. Come on my Facebook and my crack book with Hey Sexy. I have somebody who basically does something to you people. It's called Block Delete. I ain't here to date. I ain't here for you to wank over. I ain't here for you to get a hard on. I ain't here for you to, for you, to me to look pretty at you. And I ain't here to be your sex toy. So get off my Facebook, get off my lives, go have a wank, go book an escort somewhere and stay away from raping children and stay away from abusing people and maybe deal with yourself. Go get a nice wife and maybe she can go and deal with your blue balls. Now get away from my life and go fuck off and Amber will be on here later to sort you out. And for people who are on my YouTube watching this for the first time, I got some Sandman's rat who wants to be hot and sexy with me. Go, go. I don't appease to people like you. Go sort your shit out away from my lives. Get off, go away. So, as I've said, I've tried to say to the, to the contact worker, let's go out the back because that, that man's there and I literally, I, 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 I wanted to rag him. That man had literally ripped my children from me for no freaking reason, what so bloody ever, just because of his attitude, because he had an autistic boy and I've got a diagnosis for Asperger's and he thinks I'm taking the piss out of it because I don't look autistic, because his son's a raging nutter that he can't actually deal with because he doesn't understand autism. Not my fault, mate. Understand autism, yeah? Connect to your child properly. Why is he autistic? Because daddy rejected him. That's where it comes from, mate. Ain't what you people think. It's about how we regulate emotions. So anyway. Yeah. Kelly became quite vocal and excitable and suggested that we left via the, uh, the, the side door rather than confronting the policeman. As we left, Aaron asked why we were going out a different door and said he didn't like leaving this way. Kelly told Aaron that she went this way to avoid the man who had taken him from her and that she was very angry and upset and didn't want to see this man. Aaron had refused to get into his car seat, saying that he wanted to get in the one that Faith was sitting and Kelly had become quite anxious because she'd spotted the policeman. So of course I'm being assessed on my contacts and putting my kids in their car while having some policeman who's just raped and abused my family and take my kids off me. And then I've got people basically saying, all right, we get the kids in the car. Getting set up as well for this, by the way. So then all of a sudden, Aaron then sees the policeman who took him off of us. And Aaron panicked. Aaron got upset. Aaron started to rile up, saying, that man, take him away. Get that man, that man, that man, that man. Mummy, mummy, that man, that man, yeah? So... Kelly became anxious as she'd spotted the policeman and the policewoman waiting outside. She said that they were waiting for her and she's become even more anxious. Then I'm being told I'm paranoid that they're waiting for me and I should just get my kids in the car. And I am, but my son's getting really upset telling me, Mum, that man, that's that, 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 that man, yeah, and he's kicking off and I'm having to literally... My son's gripping hold of me, koala in. My daughter is saying, please, Mum, don't let, you know... And my son's not wanting to get in his car seat, and I've got these two people slowly walking in my direction. Okay, so Kelly's getting even more anxious getting Aaron into his car seat. Aaron becomes stubborn and tearful, and Kelly asks him which side he wants to, wanted to see. The policeman appeared to hear Kelly frowning at me. How does a policeman hear someone frowning at someone? Aaron eventually was strapped, strapped into the car seat and Kelly became very anxious at the time, rebutting that the police were going to arrest her. Faith told Kelly, Faith told Kelly she was behaving herself and Aaron was upset and, and tearful. As the FSS drove off, the police approached Kelly and she was taken to the car park by the officers.
and at that time, then arrested. And then I was taken to Wrexham Police Station and I was released with no fear of charge because actually I hadn't done anything wrong. Yet unfortunately, because of people's statements like this, and I was right, the policeman was coming over. So basically, they took Aaron and Faith off of me at the hospital and for no reason, just for the fact that because they were trying to check Aaron and for bruises, because they were trying to claim that EDS was the easiest condition to claim to have, yeah. So they're trying to investigate my child for injuries and things like that. We, we, we dislocate, we bruise. It's what happens? I'll show you. It's, it's, you know, a little girl. No? Tires, dizzy, headaches, lots of different symptoms. I've put stuff up today to show you symptoms of, of Shiloh. Um, if I, seriously, Amber, we just delete that freaking hot and sexy. It does my nut in, mate. To any men out there, yeah, whatever me and Dean is going through, if I ain't with Dean, mate, I won't be with anybody else, I can tell you that. Um, I ain't here to date. So anyway, I can't lose this paperwork because basically I've got to put it all upset. So because they put under here, both Aaron and Faith appeared to enjoy contact today. They were engrossed in using the scissors, cards and gluing of which I took with me. Aaron became upset and challenged at the end of contact when getting in the car. He refused to get in the car seat and Kelly became more and more anxious and frustrated with him as she became nervous about the fact that there were policewomen waiting for her near the car. And now you wonder why I have trauma to police and then being able to arrest, detain and section me and provide false information as well as social workers that basically can take away innocent children that have to suffer because of what? So yeah, I really need this paperwork in an office now. It's not fair. You know, this is Aaron and Faith. And if, I, if I even lose one piece of paper, that one piece of paper might be the one thing that has a date or a time or, you know, look at all this. You know, this session was cancelled due to the snow. My, my session's cancelled, 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 you know, cancelled. And then they cancel it and then they wonder why you're like, yeah? Oh, my energy just takes back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let me take my energy back. I actually knocked... I just actually physically knocked my son, even though I'm nowhere near him. But just by that amount of energy, because obviously the energy then bounces off, which is why I'm very careful about rearing around my kids. He just literally just got off his stool. But he thought it was funny. Um, be careful. So anyway... I need an office. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving both children. Went to the car and Kelly and Liam with no upset. Kelly strapping the children into the car seat, waving them goodbye. After kissing them goodbye. And then you know that picture that you see where you see Faith in my arms? And it's the only one I've got with Faith in my arms so she's looking down like that. This is the one. Faith refuses to come into contact. It took about 15 minutes before she came in. Kelly had brought Aaron a night sword, shield and helmet, which she loved playing with and spent much of the time in contact. Faith also enjoyed playing with a sword and hel helmet. My daughter didn't want to go into contact. It's all right. No, 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 because that will break the cup. You can't use those ones. You've got to use the plastic ones. No, 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 plastic ones only. Not my coffee cup, please. No, because I lose my coffee cups and the handles get broken. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so basically... That's why I'm the way I am, I guess. And if you can't understand that and can't support that and can't be around that, then just don't be in my life. I need people in my life that are going to sit around at night time when my kids are in bed, helping me go through paperwork, getting it in order, getting it all into these filing cabinets. Ideally, I wouldn't be in this fucking flat. Ideally, there'd be somebody out there who goes, Kelly, how much rent do you get from government right now? I've got a private rental for you, honey. 
put the forms in, we'll get it sorted. Fuck everything else right now. Just this, get you in and get government paying your rent for you so you can just literally for a moment get this paperwork sorted and get this book done because I can see how fucking important it is to not just you and your kids but to this entire fucking system and to the future of every freaking family who goes through this system. Because not... You know, Kelly's complained that to Faith's toenails need cutting. Social workers aren't even allowed to cut their toenails. Reading more and more. Listen, here we go. Aaron to Kelly when he was playing on the iPad. I freaking rock. Kelly laughed at this comment. Of course I laughed at this comment. Why would I not laugh at my son saying I freaking rock? And then they've had a go at me for my three-year-old son from saying I freaking rock when he was the three-year-old son at Richard Branson's fucking spaceship it fucking launch, standing on stage going, I freaking rock. Because that's what we said, because there was kids around. So we said freaking rather than fucking, but, you know, or I rock. You know, so he said freaking. So of course I laughed. What's wrong with that? Now, if you add, so this is why the book's so important, because it shows. Yeah, Kelly had made a comment about being able to smell something in the venue room. So it smells like crack. And it did. It smelled like freaking crack. You know, oh my goodness, seriously, this shit. Yeah, the energy in my home's changing now, so I'm gonna have to go and put this away. It's just literally, the boys have obviously just pulled it out and it's gone on the sofa and, you know, I can't do this anymore. I don't know how, how much people want to set me up to fail by going, hey, we've taken your kids off of you. And now we're going to prove to you that you can't actually cope again. So we're going to dump you in a one-bedroom flat and we're going to make it as hard as fucking possible. We're going to take your buggy off you if you put it outside when you can't bring it in. We're going to freaking make it as damn, damn, damn hard as possible. And we're going to stop you from your paperwork. And, and every time you go out, we're going to make sure somebody's writing a report on you left, right and centre, even though I haven't been under any child protection. So now I'm back under child protection again. With more and more reports and more and more writing. I'm freaking dyslexic for God's sake. Asperger's and I've got EDS. So let's hope my Uncle Sam is watching. And let's hope my Uncle Sam decides to actually ring um, what's his face? Freaking barrister, whatever his name is, barrister. Michael Mansfield. Yeah, because Michael Mansfield was my Uncle Sam's barrister when he was got nine years for a life sentence for a murder he didn't commit. And he, it was Michael Mansfield who was Sam's barrister. Have a look. It's, it's, it's online. It, it was on Rough Justice. So Michael Mansfield was, my, was the one that actually, you know, and I used to spend a lot of time with Michael Mansfield when I was a kid, you know, because he used to be at the house with Mimi doing the legal work and stuff and, 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 and court and things. So even though I was a kid... I got to learn personally from Michael Mansfield on how to do a case, because it was my uncle's case. And at the time, I was doing my work experience at a solicitor's office, and I was the one that got the paperwork out the solicitor's office that proved that my uncle was innocent. I was the one that photocopied it and gave it to the legal team. You know, so I know how to work smart. I know how to be different. I know, you know, for this, I can't do it anymore. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't even just get in my car and just fuck off somewhere because I've got flat tires and the battery's gone and, and it's like, I've, I've got two pairs of hands here and it's like, it's not like my dad's gone out for me or my brother's running up to the garage to go and get the tire or take the car up or Dean's sorting stuff out. It's just me. There's millions of you watching, but you're not here right now helping me get all this in alphabetical order in and, and date order into this filing thing so I can sit down with all of these and, and, and completely show you how they did it. Show you. I'll sh I will map it out and show you. My paperwork is no different to everybody else's. The difference is I have a psychology degree. I see it differently. And by the time I finished with doing jury duty and seeing all the paperwork on that side, 
I'm going to have a very different point of view from all of this. So when my book comes through, I'm going to smash it, mate. This system will never exist again after this. They won't do this anymore. They won't get away. And there won't be doors open so children are vulnerable to the prey of these people that are abusing them. That gap will close. So then they'll be under the help of their mums and dads. We've got water going everywhere now. Um, sorry, guys, but we've had the stupid seals making loads of noise outside for the last half hour. My routine thrown out again. So please, BBC, yeah? Get your sea lions clapping at half past six, yeah? Because at eight o'clock, little boys like this are meant to be asleep, yeah? It woke a light Shiloh up and he's just like... I'm done with everything. I'm done with everything. I'm done. I've, got, I've, come to, I've come to the point now of no return. And, and that's enough.